And welcome back to The Factor Uncensored, another dangerous and deadly drug to worry about out there. There are concerns about a new so-called Frankenstein opioid that's on the streets now. Experts say it's 40 times, 40 times more potent and dangerous than fentanyl and can kill people who ingest just one dose. The Arts Point Pain Institute's Dr. Donna Charlie has more. Just how deadly is it and, and how big of a concern is it? I say these are actually very deadly, and yes, this is a very big concern. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about when this all started. So back in 1950s, um, these manufacturers, some labs were designating and trying to find a product that uh, medication that would be better off uh, versus morphine with all the respiratory depression and the addiction that they were seeing. Because of that, they um, did a bunch of research on nitazine and found it to be very uh, effective in mice. However, it had a very poor safety profile. Therefore, it never made it to the streets. Um, it never was a medication that was being able to be dis dispensed or administered, um, and it, so it never happened. However, now fast forward to now, what we're seeing is um, these drug dealers, these drug uh, makers that are having these um, you know, underground labs are creating this product, creating this and mixing it in with other substances. Uh, and as you just mentioned, it is very addictive and it's very deadly. Some reports say it's 40%, up to 40% um, more deadlier and more stronger than fentanyl. And you know, we thought we had hit the bar with fentanyl, and now there is this out there. Um, and, and how is it, I mean, how does a formula just go dormant after the 1950s and pop up again 70 years later and people are using it and it's on the streets when the FDA never approved it? Uh, it was never manufactured by many any uh, major drug manufacturer. It just sat dormant. And now people, whether they go just looking for this formula and then put it... As in the truth is, yeah, these are, uh, you know, unfortunately, these are very easy to make. Anybody with a chemistry background can potentially, you know, create this in an underground lab where they've got the uh, equipment and the necessary things. And so that's what we're seeing. There are some underground uh, labs, especially in China, and we're seeing some of these um, medications and these things being smuggled over and coming over uh, with some of the reports that we're uh, seeing here. And so what they're doing is a very small amount of it, Isaiah, they're putting into other substances to offer those folks that competitive uh, high, that, um, you know, that euphoria that uh, some of these um, users, drug users are looking for. And we have seen a resurgence of this drug, nitazines, um, uh, during the pandemic. Uh, I think many times uh, when they did the research, uh, they saw an increase or the existence of it in 2021, then it went up in 2022, and now it's exploding in 2023. Yeah, and, and Isaiah, I'll, I'll, be, I'll tell you that, you know, a lot of people weren't even testing. A lot of these hospitals did not have this substance where they were testing it in their laboratories. I was just talking to a gentleman uh, today who was talking about adding this to their toxicology labs because this is not something that they commonly test for. Mm -hmm. And so I think that the numbers were probably a little bit more higher than what we were actually seeing. And, uh, and unfortunately, I don't think that we were doing all those testing uh, to help show those numbers and, 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 and see really how high this uh, you know outbreak was potentially. And I know now state leaders are starting, just starting, over the weekend, the attorney general in Florida issued a statement saying that this is very dangerous. It has cost lives. Uh, I recently saw a report out of Ohio where they are saying that this is very dangerous. They're ringing the alarm there, and they're saying it's getting all across the country. Are we doing enough to make people aware just how dangerous this is and that it's out there? And are we testing, like you said, enough in order to determine if it's in our communities? Yeah, Isaiah, and I think for both of those, you know, first of all, 
I, I really do believe that we're not testing enough, number one. I don't think we're looking for the substance. Um, you know, obviously it's a different formulation and it's something different that you have to assess in the lab. And so I don't think that that's one thing that's happening yet. Um, number two, and yes, I do agree, we're not doing enough uh, from a, a political standpoint, uh, from a government standpoint right now, because I do believe we need to be discussing this more. We need to be educating and talking to our, um, you know, our law enforcement, our EMS, and these are things that we need to be uh, more aware of. Uh, one thing to just add, Isaiah, this is so strong that uh, sometimes that even the Narcan may not be as effective and if, uh, if in this, and so that's very important. Again, if you have any, uh, you know, you come to a loved one, you see somebody who's not breathing, who's gasping for air, call 911 immediately. If you know that they may have a history of drug abuse, you if you have Narcan accessible, use it immediately, call 911 immediately.